Hi everyone, I'm Perrine, or uh, also known as La Fraîcheur. I'm gonna give you today a little uh, baby level botany tutorial to take care of your plants in confinement. I think it's a really good way to help us deal with the stress of being inside to grow living things. It brings a lot of pleasure and it feels like you're creating more life. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, through a bunch of different things. Keep in mind that I'm obviously not a botanist, so those are basic plan care and tips that I have. If you have any more questions, uh, Google anything, and or you can ask me directly and send me a message and I'll be happy to answer uh, your question with my the best of my abilities. Also be empathetic and uh, patient because I'm a little nervous doing things. I'm more used to being behind turntables than in front of the camera. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. We're gonna start, to, we're gonna do four things. One is gonna be basic materials that you need to do uh, planting and taking care of, of plants inside. Second will be how to propagate, uh, which means multiplying plants from what you have, which is a very good way uh, to keep on growing your garden without having to buy new ones. Plants can be expensive and also can be kind of useless considering each plant grows and can create more ones. You just might as well just do with what you have. The third thing we're going to go through is uh, basic, uh, basic plant care with plants that you might have at home. See how, what, the, what they need, uh, their basic needs to feel good and with the things they don't need, the things that are a threat to their development and maybe even go through uh, a few trouble shooting. And then the fourth thing will be taking care of parasites. Um, okay, let's start with what you need. Obviously, you're going to need pots and soil. Uh, the good news is that soil, a bunch of uh, grocery supermarkets actually carry those, which will allow you when you go on your weekly trip to the grocery store, be able to fi find soil. Uh, the second is pot. Considering that's hard to find without shops being open, uh, you have different options. You can go for just basic plastic Tupperware, or you can go for uh, metallic cans. Obviously, if you have pots with you, that's great. You can use that. If you don't, I would really go for those two options and then whenever you are um, able to go buy more parts, you can just replant them into a nicer pot. The main thing to remember is drainage, no matter what. Uh, drainage means that the water can go through because one of the biggest uh, threat to uh, plants in pots is that uh, the roots of the plant will soak in water and that creates a lot of problems. So what you need to do first is to do like what you can find in those pots, which is this big hole that you have right here. This is something you have to replicate in your made up uh, pots. So just dig um, holes with uh, a hammer and a nail. If you can make a big, big hole, make several ones. You really wanna be sure that uh, water goes through. And then at the bottom of each pot, you want to put those little clay balls and I'm talking a good two, three centimeters. Don't be shy. Uh, you really would rather uh, maintain your plant in a good environment rather than be cheap on this material. If you don't have any, if you can't have access to it, there's another solution, which is what I did with this, which is basically I had a pot that failed. The wind make one of my plants fail and it was cracked and I just kept on breaking it in smaller pieces with a hammer. I would even uh, advise that if you don't have much pot to kind of sacrifice one of the pots you have um, and then use more different kind of uh, homemade pots and then when you can uh, afford or uh, when you can get outside get new pots and replant them. Uh, so this is going to be the same. You put like a good layer to make sure that the roots no matter what won't be completely stuck in, in, in wet uh, soil. Um, yeah, this is basically the basic of what you need and we're going to talk about propagating plants. This is a good example. I've chosen the uh, Monstera because a lot of people have this plant inside. It's a really gorgeous plant, which is super easy to propagate. What you want to do with this one, this is a plant that has this kind of area root. So when you choose um, which part of the plant to, to propagate, you need to find a piece that has this root. It can be this one, or you can see there's another aerial root here. So what you want to do, basically, is cut the plant under the nod with the root. I would cut it right here, and then plant it into another pot. This is actually the baby plant from this mother plant. 
Um, if you're not confident and you feel a little scared of cutting a plant without making sure it's gonna uh, come out well in another plant, what you can do is just use this uh, root, put it in a glass of water uh, for a few days or a few weeks, and then you'll have little nice tender white roots that are gonna come out of this. And when you have this, then you can cut the plant with no stress at all, put it back uh, in, in, in a pot and it will just grow beautifully. This is exactly uh, the method I used for, for this one. Um, what else? Those actually, since we're here, I'm just gonna do real quick uh, how to take care of that plant. Uh, this is a tropical plant, so it needs moisture, but it does fear overwatering. So um, you want it to put in a luminous uh, spot, but no direct sun, because it kinda will dry it out a little. Um, you want it to be really well drained and you want to keep those aerial roots coming out as much as you can because those actually uh, capture moisture which is really important for this plant so keep it keep it uh, keep it hanging and if you think they're getting too long then the best thing is just to like gently uh, re put in either you can cut it or you can uh, gently um, replace it into the soil um, yeah, also before cutting this, this is kind of the sap of this plant is kind of irritating, uh, not really toxic as in you won't get sick from it, but it's still irritating. So keep that in mind or wear gloves uh, when, you, when you do the cutting. Um, then what we have, we have uh, those, those crassula, which are succulents. Uh, those are actually plants that I got from the street. Uh, someone just put in the garbage some plant that wasn't doing good but there was still a lot of, of, of branches that look nice so I just went out and cut a bunch and put them in water and as you can see maybe it's starting creating new baby roots uh, usually you need maybe two weeks for roots to come out it can be longer it can be less depending on your uh, luminosity of your flat and conditions so Take your time, let the plant do, uh, decide for itself what, uh, how much uh, time it needs. And then when you have roots, you can actually put them in soil. Like this one. This one is actually one that was replanted and it's uh, doing really great and doing baby, baby leaves. Uh, so it's doing great. Those ones are actually, it's the same. Those ones are actually crassulas and those ones were crassulas that I saved from the, um, the roof of my building they had been they I found them in a little clump of dust and dirt and bits of plastic and anything I don't know how it survived but it survived plants are highly highly resilient so uh, don't worry about like manipulating them with too much care like nature is really resilient and always find a way to grow so those ones I replanted them basically as is. I just obviously took the dirt away and replanted them in this um, little uh, yogurt pot, which into which I drilled a hole. This is the most important part. Always never forget to drill a hole. Um, if because I had a drill, obviously to do that. If you're not a Home Depot dyke and you can do that, stick to mm, plastic and metallic ones and do that with a, a nail uh, and a hammer. Um, what else? We have, oh, this is an easy one, which is good. Actually, you know what? We're going to start with this one. This one is what we call, or what it's called, it has several names. Uh, one of them, one of the most common one is called Wandering Jews, which I haven't been able to find the reason why it's called that. So given it might be for anti-Semitic reason, let's keep it to another name it has, which is Purple Heart. Um, basically a rule of thumb is that if it sounds like a prince song it's the proper way to call it um, this came from those plants that I have here what you need to do is just basically cut off those are very soft stems and you can cut off here a bit put it in water and it will create uh, pretty quickly some uh, some new um, roots which those tender little white things I hope you can see it uh, let me take one out for you so you can see it properly. Let's see, can you come out? Can you come out? Or oh, you can come out. There you go. And you have this little white root, which actually make those pretty ready um, to be to be planted in soil again. Uh, those actually 
have a very furry leaves, which uh, some people might be allergic to uh, and in contact, so you can wear gloves if you want to do that to make sure uh, you don't have a problem with that. Uh, and then we can go to multiplicating uh, food or consumable plants from whatever you'll buy at the, at the supermarket. It's so easy to multiply something uh, straight out of straight out of the plastic bag from the supermarket. I'm gonna start with this one. This is um, those are little uh, green onions. And what you want to do? Let me take this one out. What you want to do is cut maybe five centimeters, which is about two inches, uh, and I use the rest to to cut to for cooking. Um, and as you can see, this is where I cut it, and this is how much it's grown in the past just four or five days. So it's really fast. It was probably faster because it had a lot of roots because it was coming from um, an organic market, um, an organic farmer. When you buy them in the supermarket, it's possible that they cut the root much closer. It doesn't matter. It will grow roots very fast and start growing again. This means you can either uh, replant them in soil right away, or you can actually keep them in water and just keep on cutting the extra bit and just use it in your food as you want. When we're kind of talking about food, we have those type of herbs. Uh, this is a little messy bunch. Also, it's got a little bit of sun, so it's a little droopy, but we have some mint. We have some uh, coriander actually coming from my community garden and we have some sage. Uh, for those things that we call uh, soft stems herb, which uh, also include basil and parsley, uh, all you need to do is pretty easy. Can I get... there you go. You basically to cut the top part uh, between five and seven inches, oh, five and se uh, seven centimeters, so two or three inches, I guess. Um, you cut it, you want to take out the first leaves that are out and just leave really the top part uh, just enough so that actually the water will be used to create new roots and not just to fuel the growth of the, of the, of the leaves. Because what you want in the root is the root system to develop so you can plant it in uh, soil. Those are really new, I just put that in water a, a few days ago so it doesn't have much of root yet. But this is what you can uh, do. If you want to do that with herbs that have more of a woody stem, like um, like actually a deeper sage or uh, thyme or rosemary, then you cut a good 10 centimeters of that plant, take all the leaves out from the bottom and just directly blend into soil. Uh, I haven't had much success with that technique yet, so I would rather go to for the for the water solution, but apparently that's how you can do it also. Um, and then obviously there's this, which I'm pretty sure most of you have done somehow in school when you were a kid or family activities. This is just your basic uh, avocado pit. You are going to uh, clean it, uh, rinse it and let it dry and then put it in water with those little toothpicks to make sure it holds in water and it will grow uh, a little baby a little baby root and it will uh, soon crack up in, in two and a stem will come out and that's when you know uh, let the stem grow maybe a few centimeters and that's when you know it's ready to be put in soil and this is another example of propagation uh, I have no idea what this plant is. Uh, I found it in an abandoned lot by my home when I was going to groceries and I found it really pretty so I just basically cut, uh, cut uh, a bit of the branch, did the same thing, took the first leaves out and put it in water and as you can see, I hope you can see it, it's making baby roots. Uh, so honestly this water propagation works for a lot of plants and if you're not sure just try it out there's i didn't know what this was going to happen with this one and it's working so uh, don't be too scared to experiment with plants they are growing mechanisms that are extremely resilient and um they might they will grow again uh, don't be scared when you see your plants having any browning for example this one has some browning it also has some yellowing it has some deformed 
uh, leaves, which means that obviously it doesn't have all of the perfect condition. It's still growing, it's still making new babies, like you can see, and it managed to make a sister plant. So don't be too scared. Uh, they're resilient, you can be radical in the cutting, as long as you're stuffed in the handling. Um, this is the queer lesson of the day, you can be both radical and soft babies. Um, okay, this, if we're going to talk about plants now, a little plant care, this, the Pressula I was telling you about, can grow into this, uh, or this one, uh, a crassula, like most succulents, um, uh, what did I want to say? Uh, yeah, they basically want soil that's not too moist, so maybe uh, put it a little bit of sand or a little bit of gravel, uh, like you can have find on this aloe vera, a little gravel like this, and you want to put them in a luminous pot, and you don't want to water them too much. That's the main risk for all those succulents type is over watering um, since we're at the aloe vera here's my aloe vera as you can see it has had some uh, troubles the those leaves are browning and 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 folding a little this means it's had too much water uh, it's been raining a lot in the past days in Barcelona and it's it's had too much so what I did and if you have the same problem, what you did, uh, you do is take it out, look at the bottom of the, of, the, of the soil and of the roots. If it has any mold on it, just remove all the moldy soil, remove uh, as much as you can the mold from the roots and repot it in a soil that's um, uh, drier, a uh, little poorer soil, uh, soil. So this is either mixing it with sand or with gravel and if you can, put it in the pot that uh, is big enough. It needs, uh, La Aloe Vera loves to have space. It's a, it's a desertic plant, and so it used to, ha to grow roots horizontally with a lot of space, uh, which is also why for the Aloe Vera, it's kind of important to repot uh, it regularly for it to grow, so I would say every couple of years, uh, into something into something uh, bigger and when you repot it make sure you leave some 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 uh, space between the uh, soil and the top of the pot which I haven't done completely done perfectly here so that when you water it doesn't flow out and this is this goes for pretty much all plants um, what else uh, this aloe vera is obviously um, a medicinal plant uh, and when talking about resiliency, it's made a lot of new baby uh, baby uh, stems, which means that even though it was really doing bad a few weeks ago, just changing its condition of growing has made it do so much better. So there's nothing that's completely, completely fatal to plants. You have no idea how many times I rescued plants from the garbage that it was just like one dirty dry dried stem and give them back to life as long as you give them a little love. Um, the aloe vera being a medicinal plant, uh, it's advised to wait a good five years uh, of the plant before you before you harvest it for medicinal use to make sure that the uh, active principles uh, are really concentrated and will actually be useful. This is a guess because I have no idea how old this plant is but Think, thinking five years is, is what you want to do uh, and then how you need to use it is cut the base of one leaf and basically you can apply it as is uh, on your skin for many many uh, it has many purposes it can help with uh, mosquito bites it can help with itches it can help with sunburn or actual burn if you burn yourself out of the oven um, it can help with psoriasis, uh, acne, uh, it, it uh, helps caring or making the healing faster, it helps with cellulite, uh, afts in your mouth, um, it can be useful for muscle relaxation if you massage it to uh, your muscles after a hard workout and yeah basically you want to water it not too much uh, and you if you can water it at room temperature because since it's a, it's a desertic plant, if you take water from the tap that's too cold, it will create stress um, in the water. What else? We have this one, which is also a plant that has problematic name. Uh, uh, it's called the uh, mother-in-law tongue.
because it's long and spiky, but we're not gonna go for this sexist name and we're gonna call it what it's supposed to be called, which is a Sanseveria. Uh, there's different variety, there's a lot of variety of this plant. Those ones are actually also, those baby ones, which look very different, are actually uh, Sanseveria too. And in this case, it's the opposite as the aloe vera, which is that it really uh, likes to be confined. Uh, opposite of us, it actually likes very little room. So uh, plant it in a pot that's rather small. And as you can see, those plants are actually the same ones that are bought at the same time. And this one, which is in a much, much smaller pot, is actually growing much better than this one, um, which is in a, in, a, in a bigger pot. What you want to do for this one is also a delic plant, so uh, don't just use uh, universal soil, but mix it with sand or gravel if you can. Uh, this is another plant that fears overwatering, so chill with that. And same with uh, the room temperature or rainwater, it's even better to water things because uh, unfortunately in most cities, um, water is very hard, very, there's a lot of uh, calcar in it, and it's a lot hard on the plants. Uh, it needs uh, a luminous spot, uh, but not too much uh, direct light because as you can see, it can just burn the plant white right up, um, like you can see in those parts. So luminous, um, but no direct water, uh, no direct sun. Um, let's move to this one. This one is a type of ficus. Uh, which is the, this one is the latex tree actually, it's the ficus uh, elastica. Same, it needs a luminous pot but no direct sun because it will burn the, it will burn the, the leaves right white from, from too much sun. So luminous but not direct sun. And it kind of hates dry air. So if you can think about um, spraying it to keep it a little uh, humid uh, because it's a tropical plant. Um, that's a good thing to do. Uh, you don't want to water it too much, but just enough and, and spray it sometimes. This one, uh, actually the sap is also kind of irritating and toxic because it actually, if you cut it up, it will create a very thick white sap, which is latex. Uh, so maybe protect your hands before doing that or make sure not to get it too much uh, on your hands. Uh, what you can do also to create or, or, or um, uh, help with uh, moisture is, which I haven't done in this thing because I'm, I'm, I'm lacking material, but is to put it in a little, um, uh, what do you call it, a little plate under and put a layer of clay balls and put that under and then water the clay balls, which with uh, heat will uh, create vapor, will create uh, steam, and which will help the whole plant have more uh, moisture. Um, what else? Well, we can go back to our uh, to our purple heart. Uh, this is a very, very uh, resilient, uh, resistant plant. It's highly tolerant to a lot of different conditions. You can have it in the sun, you can have it in the shade, and you can have it in very, very different forms. Uh, if you wanted to have it bushy, then all you need to do is regularly just clip uh, or, or, or um, press the end of stems to, to stop the growth of this and it will just keep on creating a bushier plant or you can have it like this one which then will just cascade as long as it will want to basically. Um, those things make really nice little tiny tiny baby purple flowers which I really like. Um, uh, as I said maybe earlier the the leaves are a little um, uh, uh, What's it called? Little, little furry, a little furry, and some people have allergies to it. So uh, by contact, or maybe wear gloves if you want to uh, take care of this plant. It's also a plant that's very good to uh, purify the air. So you can also have it inside, and that's uh, really good. Uh, and when it comes to watering, watering, uh, water it generously, uh, but let it dry in between uh, watering. It's when you want to say generously, as in like you can drown the fucking roots. But just like let it dry a little between uh, between watering. What else? Uh, have we talked about this one yet? I don't think so. This is an areca. Uh, a lot of us have this one inside because it's a very easy palm tree, uh, palm-like uh, plant to have. Um, 
Aiken is the same, it needs to be in a luminous place, but no direct sun, otherwise you'll have something like this, it will dry. Uh, what you want is to not live in the shade because it will the growth of it, in terms of size, will really uh, depend on, on whether or not it's in the shade. Um, if you keep it inside, just put it in, in regular soil. If you put it outside, just maybe mix it with, uh, with sand. Uh, you want to water, water it regularly, but same, let the top at least uh, dry uh, between waterings. Which is another reason why having them in clay pots is always better than plastic ones, because clay pots will always kind of show you the level of humidity. When it's, too, when it's too wet, you'll see this part being darker, and then you'll know that the, the, the water is, um, the pot is still retaining too much water and you can uh, let it dry for a little. Um, it creates actually those cute little, what's gonna be little fruits uh, that you can't eat, but they're, they're hella pretty. Um, it can have some drying, some deformed, uh, uh, deformed plants, uh, deformed uh, leaves. But same, like no plants is perfect and it's fine. You don't need to want to be perfect. That's not a thing in life. We're not perfect. I don't expect my plants to be perfect. As long as it's creating new leaves, like it's the case for this one, as long as it's creating new baby leaves, then you know it's fine. If it's not, then maybe you need to start uh, investigating why your, your, your plant um, is not doing right. But talking about resilience, actually, this is a good example. I didn't want to talk about this one. I guess that's a good thing. Look how shitty and dead this look from this side. This kind of died uh, this winter, but it came back to life. So never, never fear, never despair. Plants uh, in life is way more resilient than we're trying to make us believe. Uh, actually, this also is a cacti. Cactus? Cactus. Uh, yeah, cacti plural, cactus singular. This is something that came out of this. And when I say calm, it's just that when I carried this from the florist to my home, some bits got stuck in the door and just fell. And I just put them right back in the soil and it's spr sprouting new ones um, on its own. So you can wait for accidents or you can actually uh, like clip, uh, take some pieces off and just uh, plant it in soil. What do we have next? Uh, lavender. Lavender, actually maybe I kind of want to show you the prettier lavender. Lavender um, Lavender is, needs a lot of sun, uh, very little watering. Uh, you want, once again, to have very good drainage and it kind of needs uh, some room, so give it, a, give it a good pot and give it a good space uh, to grow and if you want to cut it because it's getting too big or because you want to you want to sprout it just don't cut on dead wood because this will never grow back just cut on the very soft green stems and um, that's how you can uh, get the best of those um, you want the pot to be larger than deep this is the best advice I can give you in terms of um, in terms of repotting what else? Okay, this plant, I also have no idea what it's called, but this plant I've carried all the way from Berlin to Barcelona and the first wind, in the first summer I put it in the sun, it was way too much for it. So I put it in this part of the terrace, which actually is uh, ma mainly in the shade, and it's grown. Like all of this, all of this part, this is the original plant and all of this part is the new one. So give it a little, a little shade, it will do great. If we're talking shade, uh, this fern is also something that wants to be in the shade because keep in mind that it's a forest plant that used to be in the shade of all the trees. You want to keep it uh, moist and, and water regularly, but it's the same. Even the plants that need a lot of water still need good drainage because they don't, you don't want the roots to mold. So give it some good clay balls up to here, but then keep on watering it a lot. And if you can spray it, that's awesome too, to help it. Uh, be humid. Um, what else do we have? Actually, okay, I'm gonna take you to the ugly side of my garden, but because I wanted to show you how, when I'm talking about resilience, I'm not trying to be like, uh, I don't know, overconfident. If you look at this, come on, come on. 
see this 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 purple heart this is actually just the stem that fell off from when my thing was hung around against the wall and it's just been growing on the fucking dirty ass wet ass soil that has been gathering here and it's growing so i guess that's good um have we talked about all the plants i wanted to talk about i guess uh one more is the one more plant that you might have a lot at home is the Pashira aquatica, which is also called the money tree. And basically, whatever I told you for the monstera goes for the Pashira. So that's luminous but no direct sun, uh, well drained. You want to spray it with uh, rainwater or um, to keep it humid. And if you don't have rainwater, which obviously is harder if you don't have a balcony or a terrace to gather it. What you can do to kind of counteract the effect of uh, hard water from the tap is just to add a tiny bit of lemon and spray that. Uh, it will do good. Not too much lemon. It's too acidic. You don't want to kill the plant, but uh, that should work. Um, this is a plant, uh, last one we're going to talk about, which not a lot of you might have unless you're living in the south uh, like I am, which is the Bougainvillea. But I wanted to show this plant because this is one of the plants that uh, you can use your um, you can use your coffee grounds on, uh, and any plant that lo love uh, acidic soil can use sometimes uh, some some coffee grounds. So what you just do is after you make your coffee, let the grounds cool and not to because you don't want to put it hot, and just put it on the top on the surface of this so that whenever you will uh, water the plant it will give uh, um, uh, nitrogen to the plant which it loves to uh, grow and uh, flower and blossom um, talking again about being patient with plants and not wanting not expecting too much from them is that they all uh, react differently i have one here that's blossoming gorgeously and it's been like that for at least a good month maybe a month and a half well, I have the exact same one that I bought at the same florist at the same time, which is this one, which barely does any flower, um, but is has a lot of green leaves, which this one hasn't. So let them basically do what they want. That's that's the ground rule with plants. And now that we've talked about a little bit about the the, the uh, bougainvillea, the last part of this tutorial. You're still gonna be done with me. The last part of this tutorial is how to take care of parasites. Uh, I found, I hope I still have some examples because I took care of this plant last week. Um, a few plants have uh, different types of larvae that can grow on it, or uh, what's the name of a puceron in aphid? Aphid, puceron in French or aphid in English. Um, let's try to see how you can take care of that. This, I'll take care of this bougainvillea and this orange tree, which both have had parasites in the past week and I didn't cuddle and talk to them every day to add them to all those little baby blooms to end up having all the parasites uh, eat it. If you're a Buddhist and you don't want to kill any living creature that's fine you can let them be but then know that it will um, interfere with the growth of your plant. If you don't care about killing a few insects for the growth of your plant here's what you're gonna do. Um, basically you're gonna take a little pot, uh, a little uh, container put some um, uh, white vinegar in it and dilute it with a little bit of water. If you don't have white vinegar in your home right now, <coughs> you can also use other types of vinegar, uh, like apple cider vinegar, white wine vinegar. Uh, just maybe stay away from the balsamic. I don't think that will be a good fit. Uh, so you put a little bit of um, uh, white vinegar and put some water in it. And then you're gonna take a Q-tip and you're gonna soak the q-tip in that solution of white vinegar and water and let's see if there's still hold on i think i saw one earlier if i can remember where i saw it um oh there you go i don't know if you're gonna see that can you see that mm -hmm. this little white this is a larva here can you see this oh. Wait, open it. can you see this mm. Mm. Well, you're gonna have, I guess, to <laughs> believe me, that there's a little larva here, and what you want to do is just remove it. There you go, gently, with the with the with the Q-tip, and then dip that back in your solution to clean the Q-tip, and you can move on. Uh, this one has I've seen I've spotted some aphids quite 
a bit and I've taken care of most of my plant last week. I kind of had promised myself to leave them on so kind of I could show you but then I got a little control freaky and I was like there's no way I'm leaving this thing in here. Uh, so I think this, I think I spotted more this morning. Uh, yeah, you got some over here. Hopefully my phone will be good enough for you to see something that up close. I don't know, can you see here that you have some 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 aphid maybe it will be easier once i i just there you go see how those little babies you don't want them on your plants because uh, they will basically suck on the fresh new they come only on the fresh new stems and fresh new uh, uh leaves so basically it's the same you just want to uh roll around your q-tip Oh, there you go. That's a good. There you go. Look at this little guy. Hi, little guy. Bye. So this is a grown-up one, the black ones, and then you have the little uh, white or very green ones, which, which are the baby ones. And same. Uh, basically, they'll be almost dead by contact with the vinegar, uh, if not just like put them in this solution, and uh, it will take care of that. Um, well, there you go. I think we're done with today's tutorial. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I hope this will have made you want to take care of plants. I know it's been very uh, relaxing and healing to me to not only pass the time and have an activity, but do something that I can see grow. I think uh, one of the things we're struggling in confinement is that every day looks the same and we have no more sense of time. But thanks to my plant, I have sen sense of time. I know that five days have passed since I cut this and I can see it. I can see time and that actually helps a lot. Uh, there you go. If you have any questions, you can send me messages and otherwise just Google. Google always knows best. Uh, thank you very much and a lot of kisses to all of you queer puppies.